Hello everybody, welcome back. This video is going to be a continuation of the last one we were talking about HTML. This time we're going to actually get our hands dirty and you create some HTML and use these tags. But first I'd like to show you the HTML elements reference here in, in the end. So if you just Google that or you can go to the web page up here. But HTML elements reference contains all of the elements in an HTML page that you could use. Now looking at all of these, there's a ton. There's probably a hundred or more. I haven't actually counted them, but I mean there, there's a ton of them. Do not try and memorize all this mess. Do not try that. You'll be wasting your time and you'll never really get it. And it's, Don't try that. There's probably about 10 or 15 that you use all the time and you will memorize. And then another probably 30 or more that you'll kind of have a basic idea about and then look up. And then there's, there's, there's probably 50 that I've never used in my entire life. So just just don't, don't freak out. Just learn the few that you use. Don't sit down and try and memorize a bunch of stuff. Just use them, and as you use them, you'll remember them. But they have all kinds of cool information here. So, for example, if I wanted to look at the H1 tag, I could click here. It has demos showing how you can use it and what it looks like. It talks about the attributes, which we'll get to in a later video. It has lots of examples showing you what it looks like. It talks about accessibility and how you can um, use it appropriately. You got nesting, it's got all kinds of information in there. So the MDN docs is a wonderful resource that you can use to um, understand any tags better. So we have a nice document here. The first thing we have to put in our document is our boilerplate. One of the reasons I love Atom and Sublime has this too, is I can just do this, HTML5, tab, and it sticks it all in there. That way I don't have to remember all this mess. So we've got, as we talked about in the last video, you have your doc type at the very top, you have your HTML tag, notice that it has an attribute called language of English, EN is what that stands for. You have your head, let me put some spacing in here so you can see the different elements. You've got your head here, and your body here. Now, if I were to indent this properly, it would be like this, because both the head and the body are inside of the HTML right here. Most people don't do that just because it gets annoying to have that extra indent. So inside the head, we've got our title. We can call this um, my test document. I'm just going to save this. Let's save it to the desktop. Just call it HTML 101. Save. So now we have. So now I have this document saved, and if I wanted to open it, I could just go to my desktop. HTML 101. Oops, I didn't save it as I saved it as a text document. Silly me. So I want so dot htm. If I could type. Yes, I want to add that extension. So if I double click on it, it opens it up, and here is my test document. There's nothing in it yet, but you can see at the top it does have that title, just like I put it here. So if I change this to um, my test HTML doc. And save. I'm gonna put that on that side. And refresh. You can see it refreshes up there. So inside the body is where the vast majority of the magic happens. And we're going to talk about tags. I'm gonna talk about several different tags that are used all the time. We're gonna talk about heading tags, paragraph tags, as well as a little bit of text formatting. So heading tags are simple. H1 this is heading one and then close my tag like that and if i save and refresh this is heading one one cool another cool shortcut in atom and sublime is you can just type it tag and hit tab and it'll put it there this is heading two and you can see the headings get progressively smaller you can go all the way down to six so h6 heading six save and refresh See, that's that's pretty small and that's really all heading tags are if I um, inspect this you can see you can see that this blue part is the heading heading one heading two heading six notice it goes all the way over to this to the edge of the page that's because headings are what what are called block level elements and they take up the entire line so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's not really going to come up that much until we get into CSS, but just something to keep in mind. Even though it only the word only take up this much, the actual heading block itself takes up the entirety, entire width of that page. So just keep that in mind. And that's really all there are to heading tags. They're pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, but a lot of times you might not want 
something that big. You might just want to put, to put your text in there. So let's get let's get some lorem. In case you're not familiar, lorem ipsum is, is just a bunch of um, dummy text. So if I come in here and do lorem, lorem, do a bunch of lorems. So I got this, this big old block of text right here, and I save and I refresh. It comes in like this. This is not very good for the user. What if I want to put paragraphs in there? Well, that's pretty simple. P tag, and then come down to where the paragraph is ending. So let's find the end of this fake sentence and end my P tag like that. Do some formatting just to make it pretty and more easily readable. save and refresh and you'll notice it puts it into another paragraph so I could put another p tag here put that on the next line and then at the very bottom underneath it put a p tag you go there refresh and you'll notice it didn't actually change in here because I got all of this in a p tag so we now have two p tags p tags if I look are also block level elements they go all the way to the edge of the page. But let's say I wanted to apply some styles to make this text right here, right here, this one, look a little bit different. Maybe I wanted to make it bold. Well, that's why we have some wonderful little tags called strong. Make that bold and then in strong. Save, refresh, and now it's bold. Now notice, you can, if you can just do a B tag, and it will do the exact same thing. But don't do that. Don't use the B tag. That's old. That's um, the old way of doing it, and it's not as good. The reason it's not as good is because screen readers, people who are visually impaired or blind, ha um, they use screen readers to access the internet, and screen readers work a lot better when you use the strong tag. So save and refresh. And we can do the same thing with uh, italics. If I wanted to italicize this, I could, well, not now I can't even do that anymore. You used to be able to do an I tag, but now that's used for something else. Instead, you do EM for emphasis. So if I wanted to emphasize that, I'll put it inside of an EM tag and refresh this, and you'll notice now it is italicized. And that's really all there is to it, to those kind of tags. Notice how these tags are nested inside of the other tags. These are not um, that they start and end inside of the p tags. This is a convention that comes up a lot. We'll get into it a lot more in the subsequent videos when we start talking about lists. In fact, the very next video is about lists, and it'll make that a lot more clear. But just keep in mind that you can put tags inside of tags. And that's all there is to this one. Thank you much.